What's up everyone, welcome to today's video, welcome to the Video Game Fight School channel, thank you very much for tuning in. So there's one major issue right now that is facing God of War Ragnarok, and that is simply the matter of leaks. As much as Sony, Santa Monica, and even all the other parties that are out there that have some kind of knowledge about the game have tried to appeal to the community about these leaks, it seems more and more the leaks continue to, f you know, basically find themselves out there in the open. Now, here's the crazy thing about this entire conversation. This is a game that has a lot of excitement surrounding it the last time we got a really big game with a lot of excitement surrounding it was in elden ring and that was earlier this year and again a lot is riding on this game especially with the conversation of you know game of the year and all of that talk and it gives sony santa monica another go at it to try to go after the kings of open world games apparently they moved all the way from just making their souls games to now become the open world buck the entire you know paradigm and that is from software now the truth of the matter is i don't think these two games are really competing and there's a big huge reason for that in my opinion, I think both games are doing their own thing, and one game actually will excel over the other in regard to some of their main components. Ragnarok is going to be a narrative-driven game with a lot of really cool, fun elements around it. In fact, if you listen to the Digital Foundry conversation, it is not going to be your open-world game like you've had in other uh, you know, titles in some, in sense of something like Elden Ring. Elden Ring is an open-world game and excels in that you know, particular pattern paradigm and has done a very good job at that but here's the crazy thing too with the leaks you know me i'm not really uh you know in a sense allergic to them so i went out there and i looked for them and behold i uh got convinced to go ahead and pre-order the game as of today i'd been dragging my feet i didn't necessarily know exactly what it is that i wanted uh in terms of how i wanted to approach the game but i think a lot of what we've seen so far has really he really um i would say compelled me so I wanted to go ahead and also put on my tinfoil hat for just 25 seconds and say, I don't know if these leaks are actually leaks, folks. Yes, they do spoil some of the, you know, story paradigms, but I've always been skeptic about how these gaming companies allow for their games to get leaked because they have their trusted sources that they could always give preview copies of their video games to. And so these trusted sources are already established and will most likely not violate their ndas but somewhere somehow it's almost inevitable that all these video games are by some measure systematically leaking hmm could it be that there's some kind of a mechanized leaking machine that is just always on point leaking these games to cause some kind of a new cycle or at least awareness about the entire game project i'm just throwing out that tinfoil hat and i'm going to take it off but if you come down to the pertinent aspects of the game and you maybe go ahead and talk about, say, what could be the biggest factor for a lot of people, there are many things people are looking forward to. Someone like myself, I'm looking forward to the combat. I'm looking forward to some of the story elements. Honestly, I can probably guess a lot of the story elements for this game. Whenever a game throws down that we're story driven, I'm all about I'm all about figuring it out. <laughs> and I'll sit there and just start saying, oh, yeah, this is what I see. And then at the end of the day, I want to see how well I do. And so that's also another thing for someone like me playing the game so ideally the story and the narrative is not going to be my major highlight it's going to be gameplay mechanics it's going to be the combat and it's going to be listening to the developers as to how they went about you know pretty much crafting their game and putting it together and i have seen a lot of different episodes and a lot of different uh, material out there that's shown the development cycle surrounding god of war ragnarok and also even some other development aspects where they've talked about some of their combat mechanics some of the enemies the boss fights and so on and so forth so this should be very interesting to look at overall at the end of the day and i hope that you guys are actually looking forward to this game if you have a playstation console i know maybe someday sony is probably going to realize that their playstation pc arm is actually bigger in a sense and has the potential to be able to rack them a lot more sales than even their so-called day one releases for their you know own console exclusives why because a lot of the console exclusives are probably not being played by all of their playstation console owners a lot of the other you know people who want to play their games are mostly 
on PC, no need to have them going to go buy themselves another mini PC that's probably not as good as their PC. So once they tap into this market, it's inevitably going to happen. We're just waiting for Xbox to acquire Activision. You're going to see Sony doing good or doing right by everybody because right now, mm, not really a fan of what it is that they're doing, but I'll still play God of War because Santa Monica does a good job. Thanks so much for watching the video. I appreciate you guys' time and audience. Hope to see some God of War coverage and talk to you guys in another one. Peace out.